I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Classic Bigfoot Encounter Reports, 1960s, Part 4. Near Clipper, Washington, mid-June, 1968. Working as a logger nine miles east of Clipper, Frank Lawrence Jr. of Marietta told John Green he saw male and female creatures and a child, all covered with black hair. He estimated the male at six feet, the female a little shorter with pendulous breasts, and the child about five feet and more lightly built. Mr. Lawrence said he was lying down eating lunch when he heard a whistle and stood up, seeing the three creatures about a hundred yards off. They did not run away, but he did. North of Stevens Pass, Washington, summer 1968. Zarel Johnson of Wenatchee wrote to Roger Patterson that two relatives of his found 18-inch tracks on a trail just north of Stevens Pass, so fresh that where they crossed some mud near a creek, water was still oozing into them. Tannum Valley, west of Yakima, November 1968. Roger Patterson recorded that two college students parking at 2 a.m. in the moonlight saw an eight or nine foot Sasquatch which advanced within a dozen feet of one of them after he got out of the car. Prints were seen and photographed the next day. West of Orion, Washington, December 21, 1968. A Kettle Falls man described to John Green tracks about 14 inches long in deep new snow beside a mountain road. He thought at the time that they were bear tracks and did not examine them, but they had a stride of between three and four feet. Near Skamania, March 5, 1969. Don Cox of Washugal, going fishing at 4 a.m., saw a fur-covered human form run across the road in front of his car and up a high bank in two steps. Rene DeHinden and John Green found a few probable tracks in forest litter on the top of the bank. This story, reported in the newspapers, started a general search in the area, which turned up at least two sets of tracks. Near Carson, Washington, March 9, 1969. Mr. and Mrs. John Durrell found 18-inch tracks with a 54-inch stride in the snow on their property, according to the Skamania County Pioneer. Two weeks later, after these tracks were reported, County Sheriff Bill Klausner cast a 22-inch track there, the tracks were near the lower part of Bear Creek, about four miles northeast of Carson, and less than 20 miles from the scene of the Cox sighting. Near Stevenson, March 1969. After seeing the track cast by the sheriff, Ed McClarney and Marvin Morash headed into the backcountry in McClarney's four-wheel drive rig. They went as far as the snow would permit, then took off into the mountains. Seven miles from any habitation, they discovered Bigfoot prints emerging out of a canyon, crossing a snow-covered forest trail, proceeding through a logged-over area or clear-cut, and headed toward the lava beds. There were no snowmobile tracks, no ski tracks, no snowshoe tracks, no people tracks of any kind. They returned convinced that something out of the ordinary had certainly been there. Near Skamania, March 1969. The Pioneer Special Bigfoot Edition, summer 1969, reports that Mrs. Ellen Satterthwaite saw the legs and torso of a huge hairy creature cross the quiet country road in front of her car at night as she was driving home. Her headlights were too low to show the head. Near Orient, spring 1969. Mrs. Betty Peterson, then living at Kettle Falls, described to John Green two black creatures, both over seven feet and one a head taller than the other, which she saw run across the highway just south of Boulder Creek, south of Orient, about 11 a.m. They came from the direction of the river and ran upright, leaning forward a little. Their speed and size were impressive. Near Marietta, spring 1969. A sailor from a U.S. submarine wrote to Dr. Steve Pauley, San Diego Sasquatch researcher, about a sighting late at night where a new church was being built. He said he and three other people were sitting in a car when one of them saw a motion 75 to 100 feet in front of them. They switched on the lights and illuminated a white-furred animal, 7 to 8 feet high, standing erect with its arms hanging almost to its knees. It immediately headed into the woods. Near Carson, April 1969. 
K. L. Kramer of Gresham, Oregon, wrote to John Green that he and three other men had photographed what appeared to be 20-inch tracks with a five-foot stride about 20 miles northeast of Carson. Near Hoquiam, July 26, 1969. Deputy Sheriff Verlin Harrington, driving home at 2.35 a.m., saw a creature on the road north of Hoquiam. He described it to John Green as erect, very tall, and covered with dark brown hair. The face was dark and leathery. There was a flat nose, no snout, and the creature had human-type breasts and long, muscular legs. He got his spotlight on it and got out of the car before it walked down the bank off the road. West of Lake Chelan, July 1969. On an alpine meadow 25 miles northwest of Ardenvoir, by an isolated lake on the north fork of the Entiact River, Mike Wolf and Pat Craig of Wenatchee found tracks 15 to 17 inches long and 6 inches wide, with double a human stride. Near Cub Lake, 25 miles east of Darrington, August 1969. Mark Meese and Marshall Cabe of Darrington told Dick Grover that they were chased back to their camp by three Sasquatches. The following is part of a Seattle Times story about the incident, printed August 13, 1969. Meese and Cabe said they were camping near Cub Lake with six other teenagers August 4th. They left the party and hiked about a mile from the campsite. Meese carried a 22 caliber rifle and Cabe carried a fishing pole. Meese said that at about 8.30 p.m., while there was still daylight, they saw what they first thought was a bear or a stump. But then it raised its arm and made a motion like a human for us to come toward it, Meese said. Then it began to move and two others appeared from behind it. Mark said he and Marshall began to run back to the camp, and the three creatures, running gracefully on two legs, chased them. At one point we looked back, and they were 50 to 75 yards behind us, he said. I'm sure they could have caught us if they wanted to. Mark said the three creatures stopped chasing them as they approached the camp. He described the creatures as hairy, with fingers and toes, and hairless faces, more like a human than an ape, with four heads that dipped in and out. Mark said all eight of them sat up all night long around a campfire and three times heard shrill screams, like a woman screaming in panic, but more shrill. They reported the incident to a forest service ranger in the area. Mark said the others first disbelieved the story, but became more convinced when they heard the shrill screams. Near North Bend, summer 1969. Robert Parker of Bellevue told John Green he and several friends saw a brown creature of great size walk upright across a hillside above the creek where they were fishing, north of Mount Si. He first noticed it when it screamed. Near Stevenson, September 15, 1969. The Skamania County Pioneer, September 19, 1969, reports that two tracks, 15 and a half inches long and 9 inches wide, were found at a logging operation on Stevenson Ridge, five miles north of the town. They were photographed and one was cast by Sheriff Bill Klossner. Fife Heights near Tacoma, September 30, 1969. Dick Hancock and Gary Johnson told Dick Grover they saw a Sasquatch run across the road at night and bend a metal sign that it hit with its hand. Deception Pass, September 13, 1969. A man from Anna Cortez wrote to John Green that his daughter's fiancé, driving home at 2.30 a.m., saw a black-haired animal a bit over five feet tall walk erect across the road, just north of the Deception Pass Bridge. Near North Bonneville, November 1969. Mrs. Louise Baxter of Skamania told John Green, while driving four miles west of North Bonneville about 10 p.m., she saw a huge, dark gray, shaggy furred animal cross the road so close she had to swerve to miss it. The head was above her lights, but she was greatly impressed with the huge hairy hand, leg, and foot. Southwest of Yakima, October 1969. Ross Hendrich told Roger Patterson he saw two Sasquatches while he was deer hunting. He had stopped for lunch and watched two dark brown creatures, seven to nine feet tall, walking up a hill about 150 yards away. They would reach down and grab something from under rocks as they walked. He said he had also seen tracks in the past, once indicating that the thing had carried off an elk he had shot and skinned. Near Fort Lewis, November 1st, 1969. 
Army Sergeant Lloyd Stringer reported to the Sheriff's Office that while driving at midnight in fog near St. Clair Lake between Olympia and Fort Lewis, he hit a brown-haired animal about six feet tall that was standing on two feet. Near Bosburg, November 24, 1969. Tracks were found by the Bosburg garbage dump and at the North Gorge boat launching ramp, more than 17 inches long with the right foot badly distorted and showing only four toes. Rene de Hinden and Bob Titmus both saw some of these. Near Woodland, November 23, 1969. The Lewis River News, November 27, 1969, reports that Charles Kent of Woodlawn walked out to his car and saw in the moonlight about 40 yards away an animal he thought was a bear on its hind legs. When he got other use out of the house, it was gone. But on the muddy hillside they found 18 tracks, neither bear nor human, 11 and 3 quarter inches by 4 inches, which sank in more than twice as far as theirs did. Near Bosburg, December 14, 1969. Rene de Hinden and Ivan Marks found more than 1,000 prints of the cripplefoot creature in snow leading out of Lake Roosevelt and back in again. Thanks for listening. Please check out my other channel, The Bigfoot Project, for more true Bigfoot encounter stories. Just click the link on the screen.